Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure will take me around the greater Los Angeles area to do a detailed location search of the filming spots. Sunset Boulevard, the 1950 classic about Hollywood. And I am going to try, attempt to hit as many as possible. Some have been properly documented in the past. Some I will be giving my best educated guess thinking that I have found and I will I will go into to more of that as I get to the locations it's gonna be fun I'm ready for my close-up mr. DeMille and I'm inviting you to join me someone's yelling over there shall you that's right big the foot got all my screen captures printed out I am ready let's do this I should also mention there there will be some spoilers but you know, the film came out 71 years ago, seven decades. So if you haven't watched it yet, you've had your chance going up this incline up to the top of this hill. You're going off the color scheme of the movie? Well, like the poster, because it's like gold, black, and white. So my friend Natalie is joining. She is going off the color scheme of the movie, the movie poster or the movie itself? Movie poster. The movie poster. <laughs> and this is the Alto Nido Apartments and Joe Gillis, his apartment was right there underneath that balcony. And one of the opening frames was right down this road. Much more grown over now considerably, but that's what it looked like when you got that, that, panning, that panning angle upward. And the camera kind of zoomed in to a sound stage. They did not use the interiors, but it kind of went into that window right there in the middle of the screen. Get a little angle here of where the birds are chirping. Maybe the birds are trying to say hello to Joe Gillis right up there. It'd be a good place to live if you were a writer. You kind of follow in the, the screenwriting footsteps, which I'm sure some do live here and have lived over time. It does appear as if it is the same signage, although it was a slightly different angle underneath the window. It was you know, shifted the opposite way. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's the same one from 1950. And there's a looking up at the window there. They're gonna go down the hill, kind of close to the corner of Hollywood and Vine. And do some walking. In this very parking lot was Rudy's shoe shine business. Kind of the opposite side of Vine Street down there from the Capitol Records building in that empty lot. Now back then, the Walk of Fame, the stars did not stretch this far down off of Hollywood Boulevard, which is that intersection right up there, onto Vine. And this would kind of be the angle where Joe pulled out the car and was hiding from the repo men. They were trying to find it, and he didn't have it as his apartment. He stored it right over here. Oh, I almost just like, I almost just like tripped right there on that little hole. Pinpointed the, the precise angle because if you look at the the background there just the way it's that building is unblocked from the one in front of it and there's those antennas very faint to see very very faint and there's rudy's which would have been here there it is and then pulled car out of this section and it's neat, you can see a sign for the Brown Derby. Not the Brown Derby itself, but a signage of the Brown Derby down there, a block past Hollywood Boulevard's by. Right there, that hat from the Brown Derby. Well, the signage of the Brown, of the Brown Derby promoting that establishment. And where this white pole is there would be just past the driveway where Gillis pulled out of, that would be this light pole, obviously replaced 
The good thing about Rudy is he never asked any questions about your finances. He just looked at your heels and knew the score. What'd you discover over here? That there's a Rudolph. There's a, oh there, that's not, it wasn't, this wasn't the Rudy, but there is a Rudy. You think Rudolph was short for, he, he used Rudy for short? I think so. Totally not affiliated with, with the film, but <laughs> very interesting because there was a Rudy's shoe shine right here next to a different Rudy. Now this is interesting, didn't even realize this. This is one thing I failed to like look up beforehand. I was so worried about the, the movie spots. But Billy Wilder, his star is right here as well, next to where that shoe shine stand was. Wow, where Gillis pulled out. That's fascinating, what a coincidence, right? Well, I don't know, I find it, I find it a coincidence, right? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's I wonder, so wonder where Gloria Swanson's star is. I wonder. How awesome, whoa. That guy's running from the repo man. You might want to hide it over there behind the shoe sign. Shoe, shoe sign. I can't talk. Shoe shine stand. How appropriate is on the corner of Hollywood and Vine is where Gloria Swanson's one of her two stars is. There's one for television and one for movies. The movie one is down that way about uh, two blocks close to the Chinese theater. But check this out. How cool. Also on the corner of Hollywood and Vine as well. What an interesting tie-in that they're all right here in the same general vicinity. There's William Holden, Joe Gillis himself. Over at the corner of Bronson. Oh goodness, this guy's tires there. Now obviously the car was on a sound stage making it look like they were driving, but you know, the B-roll behind them, the projection, which was filmed at a, an earlier time and inserted in, you can see the building there on Paramount Studios property behind Max's head right up there. Now not going to be up to able to get up to that historic Bronson gate, but that is where Joe at the beginning of the film started to walk in. And as well, you see next to him was some buildings that had been torn down over time. And then where Norma Desmond goes to see Cecil B. DeMille which is right over there. And the archway still looks the same and it still says Paramount Pictures above the top portion of, but you know, it's all closed off and gated off currently. No tours. So very iconic. And you'll see stage four down there. Behind stage four is stage 18 where DeMille was filming Samson and Delilah, which was used in Sunset Boulevard when Norma shows up and has the conversation with him. And then right next to stage 18 is the building. Well, I'm gonna walk around to the other side, maybe get a, an angle from it, but there's another building that was used. That's so cool, the archway there. Walked around to the corner of Van Ness and Lemon Grove Ave, which is where Betty Schaefer mentioned in the film, where she was born and grew up, which is interesting because that's where her office was. That's what it looked like then, and this is what it looks like now. But I'm not gonna be able, I'm gonna be able to peek in, but I'm not gonna be able to walk in. So I'm gonna turn from Lemon Grove and walk around this section of Paramount and see if I can see it from a distance. Now this is a bit of a stretch and you really have to have a keen eye, but look past the forehead of Joe there. You can see a building there, three stories and then one next to it. That is down the alleyway and that building that I am referring to is this little development here, these accommodations. And that alley would be behind this locked gate, which means Miss Schaefer's office would be way down there, which is just adjacent to stage 18 where DeMille walked out of, which is still there to this day, stage 18. That dot is where we're standing looking down the, the alley there. Stage 18 right there. And next to stage 18 is Miss Schaefer's office. Right there is where that was. Zoomed way in, you can see the offices up there. So that is the window that you could see, you know, his forehead in that, in that frame I was just showing, in that top window. Well, you kind of see it from a distance. And a few yards down from this angle, you can see the tippy top of stage 18 kind of protruding up, which is where those DeMille scenes took place. They also used, used stage 17 and nine 
for Sunset Boulevard as well because they couldn't use Stage 18 because they were doing Samson and Delilah with the mill. Over onto Sunset now to the 8,000 block of the boulevard. It was at 8024 where Schwab's Pharmacy once stood, torn down many, many years ago. And this is what it was like back then versus what it looks like now. Considerably different. Right next to it was Googie's, that's the name of it, Googie's Coffee Shop. You can see the little concrete placement here. That is what I'm walking past. So you'd have the coffee shop there and then right next to Googie's was the pharmacy. Another example for, from a few years later before it was torn down, there's the coffee shop, there's Schwab's and Standing. Notice on the other side of the road though, those structures still are the same over there. That's another way to match it up, look at that car. Side note, even James Dean was photographed here. Look at the little pylon or the style of the little castle style protruding up from that. Pretty neat right across from, from Schwab's, which was right here. Now looking out of the soda fountain, where everyone was getting their, their beverages and their prescriptions, look out the door behind Max, you can see the mountain ranges off, kind of in the distance, same mountain ranges off over there. See how they, they match up as well? Cool, right? Notice up here as well, next door was the Crescent Heights market the cross streets of sunset and crescent heights boulevard which is right there and if i can just the technical address was 8024 as seen there on the window itself which is just about in this spot you know give or take a, a foot or two kind of in this little alcove so you'd be walking into Schwab's. So we could be inside of Schwab's right now, looking out at Max. He's like, hey, what are you guys doing in there? Let's go ahead and get, let's get, let's get this moving. We're waiting on you out at the car on the curb. About where the phone booth was that he was on, calling up a couple of yes men. Uh, to me, they said no. Still staying on Sunset, heading three miles down to the corner of Rexford to see if something, well, it's, I have a hunch that it's a spot. Now, as much as I researched and tried to find any info on where the very opening scene took place, I could find none. So I went on street view, satellite view, many, many hours and discovered the closest thing I could figure out is here on Rexford Drive and Sunset Boulevard, where the opening credits took place. I'm gonna go on record and just state that my thoughts on the matter is that the curb that they used, and they had a painted, so you see up here where it has the signage. Now, do not know for certain, 100%, if they painted it on for the production, or if it already existed, but I believe somewhere down here, possibly here or there, is where the words Sunset Boulevard were painted on the curb. Now obviously over seven decades, a lot of these have been removed, but notice it is the same type of pattern here with the sidewalk. And as you pan around, so these could have been added and the root system could have tore up that let me just step out but there's in the distance there there is a, a mountain a hill there and right over here is where i'm thinking either there or right here is where it said sunset boulevard painted on the curb and this is the perspective that really got me thinking looking that way now i'm going to have to walk out a little bit into the road once the, the light changes, but you'll be able to see how the, the mountains in the distance do match up. Now the road has been repaved and the median there in the middle 
has been expanded just a little but notice the tree line and you know the formations of the hills in the distance and in the trailer they use a different curb which i believe is that curb on this side not the one in the film that was on that side also from this perspective when the officers speed by the camera shifts very quickly this way and you see this tree line facing that way so cool yep this is it okay i'm gonna walk over that curb from the trailer now in the trailer sequence you'll see there are some cigarettes there on the ground and right here is where we could have painted the Sunset Boulevard on that side, opposite side of the road from the one used in the technical film itself. Add in the way the block style here are, where it says the most unusual motion picture in many years. And you can see that very distinct block style sidewalk once again over time some of these like signal boxes have been placed in here but from the trailer sequence opposite side of the road right down here is what i'm thinking just to clarify rexford drive and sunset it's just a guess it's a it's a very it's a guess it's all i can say i have no proof but it might be one last thing about this spot is you can see how the officers are going over a hill towards where I'm at. There is a hill there where the cars that are going away from me are ducking down over the hill and coming towards me. So if I was over back where I was on that side, looking towards the mountains in the distance, they would be going you know, up over that hill towards me in that fashion. Walking a couple blocks down to Beverly Drive, also no way to completely prove that this is it. But notice how these palm trees have grown considerably, but there are two sets of palm trees. The ones that are really, really tall, and then a second set, which is a possibility that the camera was down at this angle and all the cars were driving towards me and down the road. Once again, just a, just a hunch. Just a hunch. Just for that one moment, only lasts about, you know, a few moments. Okay, moving on. Just a short couple mile commute over to the entrance to Bel Air. Corner of Beverly Glen and Sunset. It's where the chase scene began. And you can see as he's kind of taken off through the intersection, the light, and there's even a bus stop that has been, you know, updated a little bit. But the repo guys were over there on that corner and they saw him from a distance and pointed and said, that's our man. You can see how the pattern of the road is still the same. You now just the angle of it there. This is a very iconic intersection nonetheless. They did a quick U-turn to follow him right that way and in real time went down that road as well, but reached his sunset. And you can only faintly see the entrance to Bel Air for a brief out of focus moment. You can see the planter there and, well, it's not an archway, but it is a little, a little thoroughfare in. And in reality, the, the chase sequence is, well, I'm going the opposite way, but this is the precise route. Going the opposite way, the camera would be down here at the bottom of the hill looking up. But they did use this street as well for that sequence. Nowhere really to park, so I kind of pulled over here to give, you know, another perspective there when he turns that going up and around the hill. And then he finds the driveway and has a tire blowout. The clearest angle would be at the beginning of when he's doing the narration, and you can kind of see it from from right about there and you see the driveway, you see that light pole there as well when they are pulling in. Yeah, totally, totally different spot from the one over on Wilshire. 
And as he turned that corner, tire blew out, sped in, well not sped in, but tried to regain control of his car, and then up this driveway. Right there. That's fantastic. Once again, just a hunch. And you see the elevation, how just, just as it is where I'm standing up here, on the side here of this dirt, at the incline, just like that was an incline. And there's the curbs across the way. All has been completely redone, and now there is a, a foliage fence line. Norma Desmond's driveway. From 1950. It is very busy through this thoroughfare and the camera angles kind of way down low. I don't want to have to go into the middle of the road again. I was there when there was no traffic, but now it's like, yeah, it's really busy. If there could be another way, there's a big truck through here past the driveway. You figure thousands of automobiles a day, hundreds of thousands a week. Probably that know the film, but have no idea. Like I said, once again, a hunch. Now heading straight up Angelo Drive to kind of a nice overlook that was used for just a moment or two for some driving sequences. Way up here. Well, another mile or so. Oh yeah, same type of little guardrail here. It's most likely been replaced, but it's the same type of style that looks familiar from the, the movie. Okay, now getting into more of a kind of a an older version of the fence line, but yeah, this is definitely the area that they use as the backdrop. They filmed in the car on a sound stage, but they did have some B-roll behind them, kind of like a projection to make it seem like they were driving up here. So they still had to bring the production company up here to, to record all this. And it's seen very prominently. Now, since then, this section of the railing has been removed and bricks have been placed just for cautionary reasons, but you can see in the distance how the fence kind of continues and those buildings over there on that peak, that would be right here, which is the start of that driving sequence. And instead of going down the hill like the, you would think they are doing in the, in the film, in reality, they are going up, farther up. See the rock formations over here. And I'm going the opposite direction but just to give a, a little correlation, so looking kind of downward. So there is that, and then like they're kind of going, coming up that way, and then they just keep continuing up along this. And I feel like they use this terrain, well this angle from way up here, the terrain, to get a look down at the cityscape for one brief moment. I've almost reached the top and I'll be able to, to show that. I've turned around and going back down, but you can see the haze and the fog over there, the, I guess you could say the cityscape is underneath all that. You can see it. This is so dang awesome to be way up here. You can really match this up from, from here now as I'm kind of like looking back back down. There it is. Right, Big the Foot? That's it, isn't it? Made it back down the mountain, but kind of going back up a little bit. Made it into Bel Air. You can file this one under, I really am not positive, but I'm assuming that the corner of Stone Canyon Road and Tortuzo Way is this spot here. Now this signage, this pole, was a prop which was used in some of the promotional material with the you know, directors and actors later on. But the thing that really gets me not only is the the ascension there and the way that that road up there kind of does that s pattern but also notice these two manholes here and the distance between them so obviously take 70 years into consideration but there are those two manholes and that kind of looks as if it would be, this is, this is a tough one. This is very far-fetched. It might not be, 
but it's the closest that I have discovered to being that precise angle there. Just because the road goes up, it does that kind of little, little zigzag up in there, which is still there. A wall has been created. Even this home that is here could be a different home. But it's, the, it's, it's these two, these two holes that really kind of sell it for me. Corner of Stone Canyon and Tortuzo Way. And as he drives off to the fic down the fictional Sunset Boulevard, kind of look this way. Now the wall has been replaced and it seems as if this road kind of veers a little more, but you never know what kind of lens they were using, what kind of angle they had. But right here was that, you know, if, if I'm correct, right here or kind of in this general section is where they put that prop for Sunset Boulevard. And you're kind of in the same, the same section there. Kind of like where you're, where you're standing is, is kind of where they would have, would have placed it. Now that prop is seen here. Billy Wilder standing underneath it. Same exact one. Without a doubt, they drag that thing out onto location and, and set it up. Which really confused me because I look up and down street view of Sunset Boulevard and this isn't Sunset Boulevard, this is Stone Canyon, the 700 North Block. Okay, moving on. Are those petunias? Right up here is the Bel Air Country Club. There was only one scene that took place here. And it is private, I'm not gonna be able to get in, but it was right in that golf course, back there. It was where he was trying to borrow money from his agent, and it just didn't work out well. He was not given the money, and I think he even lost his agent. He said, you should find yourself a, another agent. I'm also leaving Bel Air now, going back underneath this little archway. Oh yes, this very, very noticeable building. It's been used in many productions, and the one I am covering as well. The Bullock's Wilshire, which is where he was getting some new clothes. She took him here to buy him some suits. There was actually two spots that they utilized. Back, the background image behind the window was down a mile or two. Now, it might be tough to pinpoint the precise room that was utilized, but you can tell if you look at the, the line work here on the, the inside where the, the concrete is, still remains to this day inside the window here kind of getting a glare through the window but you can you can see if the camera was facing towards me looking out the window there's that kind of the lines in the concrete and the structure of the building itself inside it could very well be this exact window that he was talking to the salesman it's either this one or the next one over one of these two completely unaccessible to to go inside and really figure out you know, which window it was. But they use a little kind of like a rear projection of some footage they had at a former restaurant called Perino's, which was down the way. This was not outside of the department store, which was here. So it's two spots for that one very short you know, less than a minute scene. So he's standing in this building, but the backdrop is down about a mile or so. Hollywood trickery. Right up here on the other side is where that restaurant was. It was seen through the window. Pull over and park so I can get a, show you a better angle. Now keep in mind, he was inside the department store at the Bullock's Wilshire where they set the camera up to get the backdrop of Perino's. The camera would have been right over there in that general vicinity, facing this way. That's where Perino's was. That's what it looked like back then on this very corner. 
right here. Looks different, right? Okay, on to the last spot. Norma Desmond's mansion. Located on the corner of Irving Boulevard and Wilshire. That rather large building there is where the mansion once stood. It's been gone for a heck of a long time. It's just a distant memory. Got a few photographs uh, to remember it by, though, and the film. This photograph was taken as it was being demolished and given the, the perspective there of what it's currently like. And in regards to what you see in Sunset Boulevard, it would be around in the, the back corner of this. So if you ever you see the traffic pulling up, they would go up that driveway which was right there, which you never see on camera. And they went around the side, down Wilshire, looped around the corner where the garage was, where he hid his car and had the little apartment and room upstairs, and where the pool was built. The pool would be just over the top of that. If you were looking down as a bird's eye, it would be kind of hidden back in there. Something else you do not see on camera is the angle from Wilshire looking at it. You never see any of this in the movie. The only thing from this you see is the tippy top portion of these little, I guess maybe fireplace units or little decorative that peeks out. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. In regards to what you see here above the roof line, there are those from the other angle. The good thing is there is the building is on a spot that really is not where the mansion was. The, the pool area was in the back parking lot. So we'll be able to walk over there and match up exactly where the pool was. You have to use your imagination for a moment. I'll show you the screen grabs momentarily. But over here was where the garage was, where he hid the car or attempted to hide the car. And if you turn this way, this would be the angle you see repeatedly of the corner of the mansion with the pillars where Norma walks out on quite a few occasions. The swimming pool would be kind of in this general vicinity here, elevated quite a bit. You had to walk up a, a few stairs to get to it. But the mansion was the side wall of the mansion is the side wall of this building, precisely. If this structure was not here and you took two or three steps forward past that, you would get the little side entrance here where he goes out to the New Year's Eve party and they have these little, you know, the partitions and the pillars. This was seen quite a few times. It's rainy, he's going to the New Year's Eve party. Another time when all the press shows up, also that would have been right there looking that way. So if you'd be over there looking down that little pillar hallway. Now the insides were on a sound stage. The insides of the mansion were a sound stage, but not these exteriors here, as well as at the beginning when the officers pull up. So this is this actually gives a better perspective and angle because they would have pulled up right, they would have pulled up right here, the officers on the motorcycle. One pulled up on the curb right there. And that is that exact spot. And they continued on and walked up into the pool area, which was elevated right there. And use this as the side of Norma Desmond's mansion, because that's where the side of the mansion was, went down, and then kind of cut around in an L-shaped. So from that elevated pool area, there is an angle where it's kind of looking down upon that garage where he hid the car. And little did he know he was gonna be moving for a little while upstairs. So his accommodations would have been right up there. And he 
he was looking up there, and that's the first time you hear from Norma Desmond as she beckons him from the balcony, right there. You could really kind of picture it. I mean, obviously you're looking at a picture, but where the back end of that is, is the next property over. Just a few more perspectives here when they're on the ledge and he's watching his, his car get towed away. That's it. And there she is, what I was describing of her up there. And where they were burying the monkey was right there. The pillars from this angle, which are seen here in the little courtyard, where these glass doors are now. Oh man, so many, so many scenes took place right here. It's like etched in my head. As he's running down the staircase, the next photo, you can really see how close proximity the garage, which is where I just showed, was to that pool. So the pool being here, and it is a, it's not official, but they say the pool really was not operational, had no circulation. It was built after the mansion existed for a while by the studio, and it was never really used outside of, of filming. Now, who knows if that's true or not? Sometimes, sometimes over time, the rumor mill grows strong, so who really knows if that's true or not, but pretty fascinating. There he is calling him in. I'm just trying to show more of these these pillars. This this is a great one of her by the pool there. Obviously it would be elevated just a little bit because it was you know a couple stairs up, but that's where the that's where the pillars there. And of course, spoiler alert, he met his demise in the very pool where we're at. So we would basically be standing in the bottom of the pool. If you think about that, we're in the bottom of the pool. Right now we would be in the bottom of the pool because we would be elevated up a couple stairs. So we would be standing in the pool at this very moment. We would be in this, so we would, where, where Gillis was floating is where we are now standing. And this is right before, you know, when Norma, she has the weapon. She was not in the right frame of mind. And of course the officers, yeah, they were, they were called in. And that was all. Yeah, he would have been just kind of floating right here. You know, give or take a couple feet. I cannot pinpoint it down to the, the minute inch. But yeah, this is serious movie, Hollywood movie history right here. And lastly, the one final image. Well, besides she goes down the staircase, which, you know, the, 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 the line about everybody from my close-up, Mr. DeMille was on a soundstage, but the the final moment of her out in the courtyard against the pillar, which pillar would have been right here, that pillar. As she stood there looking off into the night sky, the quote was, the stars are ageless, aren't they? And even though her address was on Sunset Boulevard, it really wasn't. It's on Wilshire. That's going to do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe by doing so. It helps keep you in the loop. Up to date on future uploads here on this channel. And if you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know. You care. I'll see you in the next video of the vlog. So... Some late night mowing outside of, well, late evening. It's not quite night, pretty close. Some late evening mowing outside of Norma Desmond's. Even though I did film all this in sequence in my journeys around Los Angeles today, nightfall is about to rear its head. 
there was one place I did swing by that I felt appropriate not to throw in in sequence and put it at the very end.